Okay, we're going to go ahead and talk about how to enter inventory assemblies. So here I'm going to go into my items list and we're going to go down to item and create a new assembly. So we're going to say new item and inventory assembly. A couple things to note here, uh, when you do have an inventory assembly, you can use uh, inventory parts, non-inventory parts, service parts, other charges, all these different types of inventory um, items that you have already set up. You can also do assemblies within assemblies. So you can do widget A, build widget A, build widget B, and then also build widget AB. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do widget A. Okay, now if it has a sub item, it can be a sub item, of course, of another assembly. You can say, I purchased this assembly item from a vendor. Uh, so if you build widget A and then also you purchase the finished good, you can check off this box here. Notice when you do that, you can put in the manufacturer's part number at that time. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just put the description in there. What the average or, you know, the, the cost is about $25, goes into cost of goods sold. Who the preferred vendor is that you purchase it from, you don't have to fill that in if you don't want to what the sales price is, is it taxable or non, what income account it goes into. I'm just going to go ahead and say, uh, let's say other income. Okay, and then you're going to choose which items go into the widget. So we're going to go ahead and say that a brass hinge goes into it, quantity of two brass hinges, and then we say a uh, let's see, a doorknob, and there's one doorknob, okay, and then we can also say if we want to, so if we do non-inventory parts, service parts, or other charges, what that's going to do is it's actually going to pull in the amount that we have on that item marked in cost, because obviously it doesn't have an inventory average cost to pull in, because it doesn't keep track of average cost if it's a service item a non-inventory part or another charge, right? So if I choose, let's just say service item, I want to throw in some labor costs here, okay? Uh, now it's giving me a warning and we'll go ahead and fix that in just a minute. But I can throw in the labor costs here and then based on that cost that I have in the field here, it's going to assign a cost to uh, to labor, it's going to assign that value into the build. All right, so let me go ahead and save this and I'll show you in just a second what that means. So let's go down to labor. Okay, so right now labor is only set up as a single sided item for income, but we're going to say that we have an expense. So anytime we use the labor expense uh, internally, it's going to draw out of a certain category and we're going to say it's going to draw out of payroll expenses, okay? So every time I do a build, uh, we're going to say $50. That's the average, all right? So it's going to, every time I do a build on widget A, it's going to pull out $50 worth of labor expenses towards that build. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you again what that means. All right, so widget A. Now notice it updates it as $50 per Okay, again, you can say what your build point is. This is like your reorder point and anything else. Uh, you can also decide what asset account it goes into. If you have different asset accounts, you can say it goes into different asset accounts. You can have custom fields on the item just like you can on any other item. All right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and save this widget for now. Okay. So let me make sure that I have enough on hand. I said a doorknob. I don't have enough of those on hand. So let's go ahead and buy a doorknob. All right. From somebody here, enter some doorknobs, 15 of them. And that way they have some average cost in there. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and do a build of widget A. So I go to vendors, inventory activities, and I'm going to go ahead and build an assembly. All right, 
I'm going to build widget A. Notice how it pulls up for me here. There's a difference in this screen, uh, which is QuickBooks Enterprise versus QuickBooks Pro and Premier, um, because what you can do here is that notice how you know any of the grayed out columns, obviously we can't change anything there. So um, inventory part, how many are on hand, that's something that the system's telling us. And down here where it says how many we can build, 15, that's because it's telling us based on the number we have on hand, we can only build 15. Now in Pro and Premiere, you can only edit uh, the quantity on hand, how many you want to build. So you can only come down here and say, I want to build 10. You can't edit individually on the fly the, the build itself. In Enterprise, you can't come in here and let's say for this one build, we actually needed two doorknobs. So you can change that on the fly per build and it'll still affect widget A. So you can almost have special order items customized in Enterprise, okay? I can also add individual, I can add extra items if I need to as well. All right, so if I were to add in here, this, notice how it says there's negative 15 available, so it's not going to let me build any. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and based on my two standard doorknobs per uh, and having 15 on hand, the max I can build is 7.5. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to build five of these. All right, so it's going to pull the standard cost, the average cost, out of the brass hinges, the doorknobs, and then also five uh, hours worth of labor and put it towards the widget inventory item. Okay, so it's going to affect my inventory. So I'm going to go ahead and say build a new. All right, then we go back to the previous here so we can see actually what happened when I did this. So you go up to reports here and go down to transaction journal. And that, that report basically just shows you based on whatever you have on your screen, it's gonna show you what are the debits and credits that happen behind the scenes. All right, so notice here, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of some of these columns. Okay, so here's what happened. So when we did this build for widget A was built, okay, we built five of them and quantity is not on here, but I could add that to this report if I needed to. So I built five of them, and basically what it did was it's telling me that five of those widgets came out to an, a cost of $435 to build. And what it did was it actually took $35 out of the brass hinges inventory, $150 out of the doorknobs inventory, okay? And then notice also that it took $250 as a credit to labor, so what that did is it subtracted out of labor $250 because that's what we had in there as the standard and added it into your widget A inventory, okay? Now, of course, you want to be careful when you're doing this because, you know, it does affect your profit and loss by doing that, all right, adding this labor cost in, but that's just a way to add in, factor in a standard cost into any kind of build you're doing. All right, so now if we go look at our inventory item list here and we go down to widget A, notice we have five on hand, what the price is, and if we edit this, it also tells us what the average cost is because it's taking into account the average cost of the brass hinges, the doorknobs, and then also that $50 in labor. Now, one thing to note here, it is going to pull for us the cost based on what it has. So if I go look at brass hinges, okay, it has hidden here $3. However, when we actually do the build, it's going to pull the average cost, not the cost that's noted here as it would for labor. Okay, so you just need to be aware of that. It's pulling the true average cost when you do the build for, um, for inventory parts, okay? So that doesn't have to match this necessarily. All right, so that's just a quick look at how to create a build assembly and what the results are.